So in addition to the, as we're keeping the positivity rolling, um, Jamie, I know you saw some great numbers on Orion. He's been fantastic. And I feel like Orion's been, to some, quietly fantastic. Like, I think we notice him because we're always sharing the stats, sharing the numbers. But I feel like because of how well, like, Matt Strom's been on this scoreless inning stretch and, you know, the Phillies bullpen in general has been great, that it kind of has him under the radar, which I like that when he's hitting triple digits and people aren't really talking about him as much. Good. Keep him as like a secret weapon. He's that uh secret hot sauce that you can splash yeah. on that. On- uh, yeah. Tyler talked about, uh, I think last week, how much more he's relying on his fastball. Now, finally, there's a, uh, there's some great rookie relief pitchers in the game this year. You know, the one that's getting all the headlines obviously is Mason Miller out yeah. in Oakland because he's in the closing role. So there's a little bit more sexiness and attention to it. Mm. Uh, but Orion Kirkering actually has a better whip than Mason Miller. Orion is sitting at a 0.84 whip. Uh, Mason Miller, 0.87. Uh, Hunter Gaddis and, uh, for the Guardians is at a 0.80 whip. And Brian Hudson for the Brewers is at a 0.69. Nice whip. So four rookie relievers, all with sub 0.90 uh, whip numbers this year. Orion's yeah, we, been tremendous. We saw Brian Hudson uh, a couple, not yeah. too long ago, but a week ago. I think he threw an inning in two thirds. He gave up uh, just a walk, two yeah. strikeouts, no hits. I thought his location was strong. I thought his his stuff was good. I didn't realize he was a rookie. I you know didn't know too much about him when he entered the game, but his stuff has been really, really good this year so far. 94th percentile in strikeout percentage. He's not walking a ton of guys. Another guy who's not getting barreled very much. 43 strikeouts in 36 innings. This is a really nice group of young rookie relievers who, you know, I think the common theme is they're not, they're, they're missing bats. Like, and they're doing it in different ways. Hudson's only throwing 92 from the left side. Mason's Miller, Mason Miller's throwing 147 from the yeah. right side. <laughs> you know, like they're doing it in different ways, but the common theme is they're not getting barreled. Is Hunter Gaddis yeah. related to uh, Evan Gaddis? They have the same kind of looking face. He's got to be, right? I don't know no. much about Hunter Gadd- Gaddis uh, from the Guardians, but he, he looks like Evan. I feel like that's not an entirely popular It's name not a either. very common last like, name. Like, I know a couple Gaddises. You, you know Gaddises? Well, Ray Gaddis used to play soccer for the Union. Oh, what do you say? Well, Ho- so Hunter Gaddis is DD. Evan Gaddis is TT. <laughs> they're not spelled uh, the same. Well, then they're not brothers or related. <laughs> All I remembered was Gaddis, not... D's and T's. All right, so they're not brothers then. But he's having a great year too. <laughs> oh yeah, it's great to hear. But yeah, the, the the fastball with Kirkering, I think, is the biggest is it's the biggest he's you know, obviously he wants. we know the sweeper is filthy. It's it's always going to be his best pitch. But yeah. his reliance on the sweeper, his over reliance on the sweeper can get him into trouble at times if the if guys are gonna sit on it, because the point is if you're not throwing it for strikes then guys are just going to wait. They're going to wait you out, and they're going to wait for you to throw that pitch over the heart of the plate, and then, you know, they're going to, you know, put the ball into the gap. They're going to line her down the line, whatever the case may be. It's a filthy pitch, and we know that, but you can't be relying on one pitch. When he's able to use his fat, he's been able to use his fastball the way that he has, and I, I don't ever need him to be at like a 50% fastball guy because I want the sweeper to be his primary pitch. But if he's using it like he's using it this year, about a third of the time, and then you mix in, they call it a sinker on baseball savant, I think it's a two seam. I think just the, the we had that conversation Renee and I did about the difference between a two seam and a sinker. I think it's a two seam, but it's yeah. semantics. He's using that about ten percent of the time, so he's now throwing a fastball about forty five ish percent of the time. That allows you to work both sides of the plate. It allows you to throw that sweeper off the plate if you need to, run it away from righties, run it into lefties off the back foot because they can't just sit on the breaking ball over the middle of the plate. And that was the issue with yeah, like his fastball is going to set up his right. strikeout stuff. So especially where his location is, he is up in the zone. He's not middle, middle, he's not middle in he's up and everything's in that, that upper third quadrant. That's exactly where I want that four seam fastball. Because then again, like you said, it allows the setup of the sweeper, which is still his best pitch. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's been, it's been great to see his evolution. And we wondered what a full season, like specifically for Orion was going to be, but for all these youngsters, He's like we're getting, expected. we're getting to see them, um, step into some big roles. You talk about like a Mason Miller or even a Brian Hudson, step into some big roles and playing a little bit bigger than what their age would show. So for Orion, we're fortunate that you've got a guy in the mix that, uh, honestly, as you keep, as we talk about, 
the tweaks that he's making and, and his pitches has definitely paid off. 